Hello Yarnabees! This is my third time trying to film this. <laughs> it's been a while since I've actually done a tutorial, so I have to get used to this again. Uh, this tutorial is for the foundationless double crochet. Uh, the reason why I am filming this is because of the scooty pattern that I have put out. This is a part of the scooty pattern and um, I didn't really explain it in the pattern because it would have been really wordy and I just yeah <laughs> so I decided that I'm going to actually do a tutorial on it for you so uh, here we go let's bring you in a little bit forgive me I haven't used this camera in a while so uh, it's gonna take me some getting used to Okay, excuse my fingernails, or lack thereof, and hangnails and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, is that too close? Is that too, I don't know if that's too close for you guys or not. Okay, so we're going to do a slip knot. I think I am going to pull you up just a little bit. Just a little, oops, just a little bit. Just wiggle it just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So once you get the hang of this stitch, it's actually really easy and you will probably wonder why you haven't done it before. It took me quite a while in the beginning to learn how to do this um, because it can be a little bit tricky. Now with the foundationless, you can do it in a single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, but for today's purpose, we're just going to do the double crochet. Okay, so it's, let's see, oh, grab my yarn. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to do three chains. One, two, three. Okay. Now, you're going to yarn over and you're going to go into this first chain right here. Okay. And you pull it up. Okay, now you're going to have three loops on your hook. Now, instead of going in and just doing a double crochet, there's one extra step that you have to do. Okay, so you're going to yarn over. You're going to pull through. Let's try and keep in the camera. <laughs> you're going to pull through the first loop. Okay, and then you're going to do that again. You're going to yarn over pull through the first loop. Okay, now what you've done is you've made the base for your um, for your double crochet. Okay, now you can finish your double crochet. Yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay, now if you look at it, Actually, turn it this way, and then you can see it a little bit better. This, oh, of course, at the beginning it's going to look a little wonky, but um, but if you look at this, see if I can balance this here. This is your first double crochet. This is your second double crochet. Okay. Now. These bottom loops right here are what you're working into. Okay, so this one right there, you grab onto that one, that's the one that you're going to work into. So you're going to yarn over, go into that loop, yarn over, pull through one, pull through the, that first one again, and then do your double crochet. Okay, so now you have three double crochets. Okay, so ultimately what it is, is if you're looking at the bottom of this, now it looks a little crazy right now, but you'll get the hang of it once you get started. Okay, this line right here 
that is what would normally be your chain. Like if you were doing a chain of say 10 and then you start double crocheting into the chain, this ultimately is that chain. Okay? And these holes that are on the bottom are the holes that you're going to be working into. Okay? So let's try that again. Now what I like to do is keep my fingers or keep my my left hand I, or if you're right-handed then or I mean if you're left-handed then it would be your right hand I guess you're gonna keep your finger on that loop so that you know which loop you're working into okay so you're gonna yarn over go into that loop right there at the bottom pull through one pull through one and then do your double crochet. Okay, as your your um, as you progress, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Okay. Oops. Let's pull that a little tighter. So you're going to see on this side, this loop right here is the is the foundation for the next set. A double crochet that you're going to do right there. Okay. I hope this makes sense. Like I said, practice makes perfect. Once you get the hang of this, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Okay, now keep your finger on that loop. Yarn over. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to count. There's four steps to this stitch, okay? So you yarn over, go through that stitch, one, two, three, four. Okay, so when you're looking at this bottom stitch, that stitch you're going to go, you're going to do that stitch twice, right? So, or you're not going to do that stitch twice. I mean, you're going to make two of those. So, does that make any sense at all? Why does it sound like this time around that I'm doing it makes no sense? <laughs> oh, okay, so you're going to yarn over. Go through that bottom stitch, pull up a loop, okay, and you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, okay, now you can do your double crochet. Right here is the base for the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay. Now if you turn it this way, you're going to see all of your double crochets, right? And all these loops right here, right down here, those are the loops that you've worked into. Okay, so let's go back and try this again, just so you can see how to do that again. Oops. Okay, start with your slip stitch. You do you do you. You do the slip stitch that you are used to. Okay. Chain three, one, two, three. Okay. Now you're always going to be working into the bottom stitch. Okay. So you yarn over, go into that third or the first stitch pull up a loop. You're going to have three stitches or three loops on your hook. Okay. Yarn over. Pull through that first loop. You're still going to have three, um, three stitches on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through that first loop again. Now you've made the base 
for this double crochet. Now you can finish your double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Right there, right here. That's the stitch that you're going to work into next. Now don't do these stitches really tight. Keep them a little bit loosey-goosey just until you can um, get the concept of doing this. Because otherwise if you do it too tight you're going to lose track of this loop. And this loop is the one that you're, you're working into, right? So let's do it again. Yarn over. Go into that loop right there. Right there. Yarn over, pull up one loop. Okay. Yarn over, pull through that one loop. There's the base. Now finish your double crochet. Go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay. Now pull on that and then you can see it better. Okay, so this right here, that's the loop that you're going to be working on. If you get confused, just turn it this way and you'll see the double crochets. That bottom loop right there, that's the one that you're going to be working into. And so if you have to, take a, take a darning needle and just stick it in there. And then turn it back around. And then you'll know that's the loop that you have to work into. Okay. Yarn over. Pull your needle out. Go into that, that loop. Pull up one. Yarn over. Go through that one, that first loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Now you've finished that double crochet. That loop right at the bottom, pull it out a little bit so you can see it. When I first started, what I did was I did them too tight and then I ended up going in over here and and that was wrong because that's that's the the body of your double crochet right there okay so this loop right there that's where you're going into the next okay so you turn it like that and you can see okay <coughs> Okay, so let's do a couple more. So I'm I always count so that if I if I ever have any doubt, I always have four steps. There's your loop. Go in, pull up. That's one. Loop over, pull through one. That's two. Loop over, pull through two. That's three. Loop over, pull through two, that's four. So there's four steps to this one. Then right there, pull that out. There's your loop. Okay, right there, there's your loop. Okay, so if you ever get lost, just turn your work and look and where find out where the loop is at the bottom of your double crochet. Okay? Now, I'm just going to do a couple so that I can show you what to do Oops. when, uh, when you've finished a couple of these. Say you're at the end of your, your row. Oh, good grief. Now I can't even do it on camera. <laughs> ah. And I've got the sun shining in my eyes, so trying to basically do this blind. I'm going by feel, people. I'm going by feel. Okay, I'll just 
just do this one more. Okay, now say you've got all the ones that you need. Okay, you're going to do exactly the same thing as if you had chained a whole bunch of, um, of chains, then double crocheted in all of them, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to chain two or chain three or whatever you're going to do. Turn your work. And then start in your double crochets. There you go. And the next one. And the next one. So it's exactly the same as if you had done the traditional chain and a row of double crochets. Can't see a thing. Okay. So there you go. So it's exactly the same. The only thing is, is you're taking out a step like you're taking out the step of doing all of your chains first and then double crocheting. You're doing those two things in one step. Right? So I hope this makes sense to you. If it doesn't, leave a comment below or email me and say, hey, I didn't quite understand that. And, you know, I might be able to FaceTime with you or uh, do a messenger um FaceTime, what's it called? The um, Messenger, whatever it's called, where you can talk to people on video on, on Messenger. I'm new to it, so I'm not quite sure on the lingo. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then hopefully this helps. It's going to take you some time to get to understand the concept of it, but as long as you just remember, oops, that this bottom, these bottom stitches here are the ones that you're working into. Okay, and if you ever get confused, you just turn your turn your work over and you just look, and you see all the bottom of your um, of your stitch, and that's what you're going to be working into, right? But like I say. Do them loose at first so that you get the idea and you've got room to be able to see where your stitches are. Once you become old hat at it, then you can tighten up your stitches or whatever. But until then, just take your time. It can be frustrating. It, I mean, it took me months to figure it out because I couldn't find a tutorial that actually, that I connected with. So I'm hoping that I'm going to connect with some of you and um, and hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to understand. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, I'm hoping maybe that you'll give me a comment and tell me, yay, I figured it out. <laughs> I think that would be wonderful. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I will be coming up with a lot more tutorials uh, now that I've got my camera set up done. And uh, I hope you're going to be around for all of that. Okay, so thanks for joining me and I will talk to you soon. Bye!